today. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using graphs of functions to get important information about the graph. Basically, it's seeing if you know how to read a graph. So it's going to be really easy because we are really pretty good at this. So if I said to you, um, find the domain and range given the graph, that's obviously information you can pull from a graph. The domain is x value, so this one would be 1 to infinity. Do you agree? And my range would be what? 2 to infinity, yeah. So we can tell domain and range really easily. Same here. Um, the domain and range on this one, wouldn't the domain be from negative 2 up to 2? And my range would be 0 up to 2. So we can tell domain and range. We can also tell if it passes the vertical line test, meaning if it qualifies as a function. So yes, this one qualifies as a function. Each x only has one y. So does that one. All right, next thing you're going to be able to tell from a graph is what's called the local maximum, local minimum, and increasing and decreasing intervals. Now, everybody, the nice thing about not being able to use a calculator is, honestly, this lesson would be way harder with a calculator because we have to give you stuff that's really straightforward or you get to just give a rough estimate. So let's look at this. Now, notice the reason it's called a local maximum is because technically it goes on forever. So there is no absolute max because it goes on to infinity. And it goes down to infinity, so there's no absolute minimum. We're just saying localize, we're localizing it to an area. So local minimum just means in general, where do you see a maximum and minimum happening? So maximum would be a highest value right here. This point would be considered a maximum, a local maximum. You would just write down the local max is this x, y point. So our max on this one would be negative 3, 3. Now these are x, y points. Local max and min you would write as an x, y point. And then our min right here, it's a low point, so that would be the x value of, I mean the xy point of 4 down 4. Pretty straightforward, right? So, um, good stuff. Questions on max and min? Alright, now we're going to do intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now here's what's so, so, so important. It is always, we write our answers as intervals for x. We do not look at our y value. So we look and see where is the function going uphill, or where would you, if you were to step onto it, where would you be walking uphill? So let's look here. Increasing, wouldn't we be walking uphill to there? But then we start going downhill, don't we, after that? But then we'd also be walking uphill from here up. So we do not do y values, you only state it for x. So what x values are we increasing over? From negative infinity up to the x value of negative 3, do you guys see? We're increasing from negative infinity up to negative 3. Then we're also increasing from the x value of 4 to infinity. Now we're decreasing. Now notice also these are not including because when you get to negative 3, when you get to this point, you're now at the top of the hill. You're not going up. You're not going down. It's not considered increasing or decreasing. So max and mins are not either. That's why it's parentheses. So aren't we decreasing from this x value to that x value? Make sure you do x, not y. That's one of the most commonly missed things. So from negative 3 up to 4, we are decreasing. We're going downhill. Questions on that? Okay. So I'm going to test you now. Let's just make sure you're good. What is the x, y point of the local maximum or maximums? What's one of them? 2, 6 is a max, true. Any other maxes? Negative 3, 3. Those are local maximums, correct. And then our local min is over 0 down 2. Pretty straightforward. Good. Let's do intervals of increasing and decreasing. So just tell me, remember, it's x values, not y values. Where are we increasing? From what x value to what x value? Let's go from left to right. Negative 2 up 2. Up to zero. Good, I'm glad you didn't say four. So from negative two to zero, we were increasing. Union, and then also from three to eight. And then we're obviously decreasing from negative six to negative two. And then we're also decreasing from zero to three. Okay, awesome. Now if I said to you, given this graph, given this picture here, What's f of 0? Doesn't that mean what's the y value at x equals 0? That's how functions work, correct? So what's the function, what's the y value at at x equals 0? 4, f of 0, we plug in 0, we get out 
4. Does everybody see? We plug in 8, we get out. Does everybody see that the function I want? We plug in 8 is 5. Okay, good. Yes. We always do x values, so isn't it going downhill from here to here? So it's the x value of 0 to 3. Yeah, always x. So the function at negative 2 is obviously 0. I think we get the picture with that. Do you agree? Okay. All right. Awesome. Now looking at this one, when we have open circles, we're just going to make sure we're good with increasing and decreasing intervals. So it looks like increasing intervals, this one would be going downhill, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Downhill. So our increasing interval starts at the x value of 1, and it goes to infinity. Now, because 1 is this like open circle, we're going to do parentheses which makes sense, you know, not including. And then our decreasing interval here would be from negative infinity, x, remember it's x, so from negative infinity up to the x value of negative 4, and then bracket, parenthesis, because look, negative 4 on here is a closed circle, and then union, and then we're still at negative 4, aren't we? From negative 4, but now it's an open circle, and we're decreasing to the x value of 1, and then was it including 1? Bracket. Okay. Questions on that? Really straightforward stuff. All right. Cool. That's the end of 2.3. So now we're going to learn 2.4, and this is the only formula you need, and you just use it every time. It says find the average rate of change. So average rate of change is over an interval. Between this x value and this x value, what is, you're going to have like, like a line, for example, has a slope, correct? Slope is an average rate of change. Literally, this formula is just another formula for kind of slope. So on average, what is the rate of change between an interval from A to B? So this is the formula you'll write down. You'll take your function plug in B, subtract your function plug in A, and then all over B minus A. So it's F of B minus F of A all over B minus A. That is our average rate of change formula. you got to have it memorized for the test. Not hard to memorize. So everybody looking here, it says, given the quadratic x minus 3 squared, find the average rate of change between the x values of 1 to 3, from the, from the interval to 1 to 3. So this is always going to be, a will be your smallest x value, and b will be your largest. So that's a, that's b. From 1 to 3, we want to know the average rate of change. So let's use our formula. Let's just like write down what the formula is. It says take f of b, so isn't b 3? So it would be f of 3 minus f of a, so that would be minus f of 1, and then all over your b value minus your a value. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Do you see where I'm getting the formula? Now what does f of 3 mean? Take the function, plug in 3. So let's do that. Let's take the function and plug in 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0. So we have 0 for f of 3. And then you have minus. The function when you plug in a 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So we have 0 minus 4. And then that's all over 2. So isn't that negative 4 divided by 2? So negative 2 is our average rate of change. So it would be going down. If we were to graph this. On that interval it's going down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. On average it's getting smaller over that interval. Or it's going down, I guess I should say. Okay, so if you know that formula, you use it every time. So let's look right here. If an object is dropped d distance from a cliff over an interval of time t, then the equation for distance over time is d of t is equal to 16t squared. It says find the average rate of change between 1 and 5 seconds. So after it's fallen from 1 to 5 seconds, it wants to know the average rate of change, the distance average rate of change. You just use the formula. So what did my a value be the 1? My b value would be 5. So it says f of b, so f of 5 minus f of a, all over b minus a. So 5 minus 1 is 4. Does everyone see? So the function when I plug in 5 would be 16 times 5 squared, which is 16,400. So this is 16,400 minus the function when we plug in 1. 16 times 1 squared. You guys see where I'm plugging it in? 16, right? And then you would calculate that divide by 4. So 
It's 16 t squared, but the 16's not squared, right? Or there'd be parentheses. Good question. Right, right. Does that make sense, everybody? Do I need to finish that one off, or do you get how to do the math? This minus this, and enter divided by 4. Okay, cool. That would be the average distance, the average rate of change. All right, let's look at this one. Find the average rate of change. Now, this is going to be one that I guess you could write down. Um, if they give you variables, it's the same formula. It says find the average rate of change between x equals a and x equals a plus h. So it isn't, everybody, a is always, remember the formula is f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. So in this one, isn't the smaller value always a? So this is a, and then obviously a plus h is larger than just a, so this would be my b value. a is a, b is a plus h. Does everybody see? So look, let's write what the formula says. It says find the function when I plug in b. So that'd be the function when I plug in a plus h, since that's what b is. Minus the function when I plug in a. So minus f when we plug in a, a is a. And then it says all over b minus a. We did this two times ago. What does this mean? The function when I plug in a plus h. Where do I plug in a plus h? Into x, right there. You're right. So we're going to take a plus h and plug it in there. So that would become a plus h squared and then minus 1. We've now done f of a plus h. Now it says subtract off the function f of a. So it says take the function and plug in an a, right? So minus, I'm going to use parentheses, this is huge, to use parentheses is very important. Subtract off f of a, so that would be a squared minus 1. And then all over the b value, which is a plus h, and then it says minus a, and a was a, so minus a. There is your equation that you need to simplify, not equation, expression that you need to simplify now. So don't we need to simplify the top? Mm -hmm. To do that, I need to multiply out this. So we know that's a plus h times a plus h. And so let's go ahead and do that. So we would have a times a is a squared plus a h plus a h. So that'd be plus two a h's plus h squared. Now don't forget about that was just a plus h squared. We have a minus one. We have a minus, I gotta distribute my negative. That's one of the most commonly missed things. So we have minus a squared, now it's plus 1. And then that's all over a plus h minus a. So wouldn't that just be all over h? So now combine like terms in the numerator. a squared minus a squared. Negative 1 plus 1. So it looks like the top has 2ah plus h squared divided by h. So on top, can't I factor out an h? Then left would be 2a plus h. On bottom, I have an h. So now what? Divide those out. So our final answer would have been 2a plus h. Yeah, you're dividing it out. Uh-huh. Hey, awesome. Hey, so just what if you're given a table of values? We're literally, this is the last two examples. If you're given a table of values, that's an x, y chart, guys. X, remember we write x, and y, we write y is f of x, don't we? Mm -hmm. So if this is, it says find the average rate of change of the temperature outside from 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So isn't a going to be 9 o'clock? Mm -hmm. Well, then isn't this the function at a? Mm -hmm. So this is f of a, then. And then our b value is 1. So this must be f of b. And then literally just plug it into the formula. Isn't it f of b minus f of a? So 62 minus 40 all over b minus a. So all over 1 minus 9. And then you just calculate it. Average rate of change. Those ones are the easiest. You don't even have to do any math behind it. Does that make sense? Literally slope. Rise over run, basically. All right, so looking at this one, find the average rate of change given a graph. Find the average rate of change on the interval from the x value of negative 2 to 1. So my a value would be negative 2, my b value would be 1. We know the formula is f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Now people say, well, what's f of b? It says, what's the function at b? Well, what is b? 1. So what's the function at 1, everybody? 
The function at 1 is at negative 3. Does everybody see how the y value is negative 3? That's what f of b means, right? That means the y value at b, b is negative 1. So it's negative 3 minus the function at a. a is negative 2. What's the y value at negative 2? 3 minus 1 over, and then our b value is 1, and then minus our a value is negative 2. Be really careful. Usually the double negatives people don't write, and that's where they usually go wrong. So on top we get negative 4, and on bottom we get a 3. Your average rate of change is it's changing by negative 4 thirds on average. And you're done. So it's that formula over and over again, and that's all you got to know. Pretty easy. Okay, awesome. Here are the problems for the homework that you're going to do. Try and get it done in class. I bet you can.